October 27th of 1992, 11-year-old Shauna Howe is out with the Girl Scouts, specifically a Halloween party. She got out of there at around 7.50 p.m. Her and her friend Joey L. left together. Her friend said that they split ways and Shauna continued to walk home. She would never be seen again. Today we're going to be talking about the abduction and death of Shauna Howe. Hey everybody, what's up and welcome back. If you're new here, I'm Liz and today we're going to be discussing the abduction and death of Shauna Howe and how it affected Oil City, Pennsylvania. Shauna Howe was abducted on the corner of West 1st Street and Reed Street. This was about two blocks away from her home. Now, there was one witness that happened to see what happened to her. This is a man named Dan Payden who was a resident of Oil City. Now, he said, he said, that he witnessed a shy brunette with a page boy style haircut that was abducted near the busy intersection of West First and Reed Street. Now, he also said that he saw a thin, disheveled white man force a young girl into a red car. This report came in before Shauna Howe's mother called the police and reported her daughter missing. So she reported her daughter missing about three hours after this witness called in and informed the Oil City Police about what they had seen. So they had already known something had taken place and then Shauna's mother called in and let them know that Shauna was missing. Dan paid in provided the details of what he saw, what happened, the abductor and the getaway car. Now, for approximately about two days after Shauna would go missing, a family member would find part of her gymnastics costume that she wore for this Halloween party for the Girl Scouts near a railroad bed in a wooded area near Rockland. Now, unfortunately, Shauna's body would be discovered about 200 yards from where this piece of her costume was found. It is believed that Shauna was thrown from the trestle bridge into a dry creek bed near Coulter's Hole and that she died from blunt force trauma from the impact on her chest and her head that was caused from this fall from the bridge. Now, the investigation into her murder continued for nearly about 10 years until a breakthrough, breakthrough finally came in. There was a DNA sample that was taken from an Oil City resident. His name is James O'Brien. Now, he was currently serving a sentence for attempted kidnapping of a woman from Oil City in 1995. But this is not the first time that this name would have come up. So the citizens in Oil City kind of knew that something had to be related. When there was another girl that went missing, eerily similar to that of Shauna, they knew something just wasn't right. And sometimes, sometimes small ideas and ideologies and theories when it comes to certain things that happen in a small town stay within the small town and it's not really like told to officials. I know that from firsthand experience from what happened with the Sheila Labar case when I lived in Epic, New Hampshire, because there's a lot that is not public about what she did. And a lot of it has stayed within the town. Um, just like other things that happened when I lived in that town, we had a man that basically barricaded himself inside of his home on 125 and threatened to blow it up. That was not, that's not public knowledge. That's not out on the news circuit. That's not. So like I'm using these examples, this is exactly what happened with this case. So another abduction took place and James O'Brien went to prison for this attempted abduction of a woman in 1995. Now, getting back to the DNA sample that was taken, this DNA sample matched the seminal fluid that was found on Shauna's body. And this fluid was taken and the testing was done in an FBI lab in Washington, DC. Now, prior to this, James O'Brien was not a suspect. This is due to them, the local authorities believing that he was in jail at the time of the attack. So he was on their radar, but not really because they thought he was in jail. They would end up, they would end up coming to find out that a man, a specific man <laughs> that would end up like 
blowing the case wide open. His name is Eldred Walker, or he went by Ted. Now, Ted would be involved, and in, this is because there was talk in town as well about what he mentioned that he was kind of affiliated with. Now, police would talk to him and they would eventually search his home. And his home in particular is a part of the murder of Sean Howe. Now, Eldred, or Ted, so Ted Walker, said that he at one point might have opened his home up to people that may have done something really disgusting. And that there, there was a suspect, an early suspect in the case that resembled Ted Walker. You know, the one that the lovely law-abiding citizen had seen taking the girl and putting him in the car. Completely matched that of Ted Walker. And also one of his vehicles matched that of the getaway car as well. But his DNA didn't match, so this is what kind of stalled the case. So Ted Walker was given a plea bargain. And in this plea bargain, he basically would have to testify against Timothy and James O'Brien. Now I'll get to why Timothy and James O'Brien are affiliated in this. So with this plea bargain, he would have to plead guilty to kidnapping and third-degree murder for the trial that would take place in 2006, and that he would have to testify against Timothy and James O'Brien. The reason why he would have to testify against them is because in his confession to police, he said that Timothy and James O'Brien were waiting in his parked car, and he brought them back to his home after which he grabbed Shauna and passed her to them. He also admitted that he was downstairs in his home and the brothers brought Shauna upstairs. And he admitted to knowing that he helped these two men kidnap and rape this 11-year-old girl. And he heard her crying upstairs. He would then continue on by stating that he, he was not involved in her death whatsoever. He just helped them pro by getting this girl, them doing what they wanted to her, and him housing them. In October of 2006, Timothy and James O'Brien were found guilty of, of kidnapping, conspiracy, and second and third degree murder charges. They were acquitted on first degree murder and rape. Because of Shauna's death, because it happened so close to Halloween, Oil City banned trick like nighttime trick or treat specifically. And this ban was in effect for 15 years until it was lifted in 2008. I believe that this ban was lifted because of the conviction of the brothers in this case. And they, the city itself felt that they didn't have to hide anymore. So what are your thoughts on the murder of Shauna Howe? I know I didn't, I didn't want to go full into who are the ones that killed her. I wanted to go mainly based on what had happened. So, and also at the time when they arrested James and Timothy, they were also serving time in state prisons for unrelated attacks that they were arrested for in July of 2004. And they were arrested for Shauna's murder in July of 2004. So they were already in jail. So it's not like they're going to get out of jail. And they, Ted Walker told, like specifically told the police that he and the O'Brien brothers had talked about abducting a child as a Halloween prank in order to make the Oil City police look foolish. So why, like why, why would you do this? You knew that you were aiding and abetting two fugitives, people that were already already had a rap, like a rap sheet. You go on and help them. You hear what they do to this poor little girl, and you know exactly what they do, but you keep it hush hush for since 1992. I get it. Yeah, they might have been younger, but no, you should have you should have been one of the people to help solve this case. It doesn't matter whether you're guilty or not. You knew exactly what happened and you should have come forward and let her family grieve properly. What are your thoughts? Leave them in the comments down below. I would love to know. Don't forget to like, subscribe, and turn your bell notification on all. That way you know whenever I upload. And I will see you guys in a brand new video.